Hello, and thanks for your interest in this course, Geospatial Data Science with Python, Statistics, and Machine Learning 1. I'm going to go over a lot of information about what this course is about and what's in it, but if you're just here for the coupon code, there it is. You can go to Udemy, you can look up this course, use the coupon code at checkout before Friday, February 19th, and you'll be able to get this course as well as its prerequisite Geospatial Data Science with Python uh, Geopandas for $9.99 or maybe less in your country. This course is about vector data analysis in Python using Geopandas, Stats Models, Scikit-Learn, and PySAL. So we use Geopandas in an interactive Jupyter Notebook environment in order to perform exploratory data analysis prepare our geospatial data for inclusion in models for statistical inference and machine learning, create new explanatory variables from existing geospatial data, which is also known as feature engineering in the world of machine learning, and we'll learn to use some of GeoPandas tools for identifying and handling outliers and missing data. So we're going to use stats models for statistical inference and a priori model selection because it has some good methods for identifying the importance of specific explanatory variables. And then we'll use scikit-learn for machine learning applications because it has a much richer set of machine learning algorithms and lots of tools for things like cross-fitting and tuning model hyperparameters and things like that, which don't require a lot of a priori knowledge. That's just based on learning from your data. And at the end of the course, we'll use PySAL when spatial autocorrelation is an issue. And we'll see what tools PySAL has for identifying and dealing with this. This course is project-based learning. The project that we're going to look at is exploring biodiversity in Mexico. And we'll follow this project through and use it in examples throughout the course. We'll calculate some biodiversity metrics as response variables, and then we'll use some existing explanatory variables and engineer some new ones in order to prepare our data for modeling. And we'll take a number of different approaches with this data. We'll spend a fair amount of time on the beginning with linear regression because that's familiar with a lot of people. And so we'll use it as a basis for discussing some important concepts. We'll also talk about a number of different supervised classification models, including logistic regression, which attempts to model not a continuous response variable like linear regression does, but rather models of probability that an observation belongs in a specific category. And so this is used for classification. We'll also look at some other methods for supervised classification, including decision trees and random forest, k nearest neighbors, and support vector machines. And then we'll also look at some unsupervised classification methods. And the difference between supervised and unsupervised classification is that with supervised classification, you have a set of training data and you know what the true response variable is for each one of those observations. And so you can train your model with those known response variables, and then you can run new observations that you don't know the classification for through your model and predict what classification it is based on the explanatory variables that you use. Now with unsupervised classification, you don't know what the true response variable is, and so you're just using the explanatory variables to create groups of observations that are similar. And then it's up to you to, de to decide what makes them similar and create your own labels for those groups. And finally, we'll look at some other regression methods. These will be non-parametric regression methods in that they don't assume an underlying distribution of the data. And many of these unsupervised classification methods, such as decision trees, k-nearest neighbors, and support vector machines, can also be used for regression problems to predict a continuous numerical variable as well as for classification problems. And throughout the course, we'll talk about specific issues, including overfitting, which is a big one, which occurs when your model predictions fit your training data very well because they're fitting random error in your training data. And that causes them to be less accurate when you make predictions against unknown data because the unknown data will not have that same random variation that your training data has. 
And this is a big problem in both statistical inference and machine learning. And there's a number of different ways that it can be addressed, partly through careful a priori model selection, as we do when our goal is to make statistical inference from a sample to a population. And we use our a priori knowledge to come up with a carefully selected set of candidate models to fit. In the context of machine learning, we oftentimes have just a bunch of data and we need to make predictions and we're not going to go through the entire process of model selection. And so machine learning has some methods such as cross-validation and carefully turning some hyperparameters that control how well the model fits the training data in order to find some values that end up fitting the underlying process and thus can be used both with the training data and unknown data that are not specific to random variation within your training data. And another issue that we'll be addressing with throughout the course that's specific to geospatial data is spatial autocorrelation. This is something that as geospatial data scientists, we always have to take into consideration and understand what it is, how to detect it, how to deal with it, and which models it causes problems with. So again, if this course sounds interesting to you, you can go to udemy.com, locate this course, use the coupon code GDS underscore SML, and you'll be able to purchase this course for $9.99 until February 19th. That's next Friday.